Welcome to episode 84 of the Liberty Dad podcast, where we prepare for tomorrow's political conversation by how we engage today. This episode is part of my series, Dad Talk, and I've invited Jay Morris to have a chat. What's this about? Glad you asked. I'm inviting everyday dads on the show to talk about what's important to them. Episodes may range from a little bit of liberty to a whole lot or even none at all. This series is about raising the voices of dads and listening to what they have to say. And that means you may hear some ideas discussed that you disagree with. That's okay. Their voice is important and you cannot raise the voice of another if you spend time shutting them down. In this episode, Jay talks about raising his son to express himself in whatever way makes him feel comfortable while not succumbing to potential bullies. Jay and I met through a dad group on Facebook through a conversation on boys enjoying pink things. Let's dive in and hear what he has to say. All right. All right. So we are Hi. we are back with the Liberty Dad Talk, and I have today with me Jay Morris. Jay, how is it going? It's going well. How are you? I, you know, I can't complain. Uh, Christmas is almost here, and, uh, you know, it's still nice and warm down here in Florida, so enjoying it very much. <laughs> Um, so to point out, Jay and I met actually through a Facebook group. There's a dad's Facebook group and I believe you had posted something about, um, children in colors, like boys in colors, like wearing pink or something like that. If I remember, if I remember correctly, I think you had posted a picture of you wearing like a pink or salmon for all the men out there, you know, shirt. I think that was, I think that's what it was. And then I made a comment and I posted a picture because I, ju- I just happened to have been um, at the gym with my son. He goes to this like children's gym. And when they started pulling out some of the little cars and stuff like that, he immediately went toward a pink one. And he grabbed it and just dove on top of it, you know, basically and started riding away. And I, I took a picture of it and I put it that I put that picture on your comment. And I was like, you know, I don't remember exactly what I said, but it was something to the effect of, let the kids play like, you know, so now that we've kind of got the backstory of like how we came, how we came to know each other, let's learn a little bit more about Jay. Tell me about Jay. What's, what, what do we need to know about you? Yeah, absolutely. So, so first, so it's ironic. Uh, cause I couldn't, I knew we met through the dad group. I couldn't remember the post, but yeah, it was my son was wearing the pink, uh, princess shirt. And then I was wearing like a yeah salmon shirt or what it was purple pinkish whatever right um but yeah that was the post so ironically um because of that and because there was like you had a great comment but a lot of people did not have great comments on it and so as kind of like as kind of like a you know what guess what um i told um i think it was my mother-in-law that got me a princess shirt that i actually happened to be wearing today oh wow um, <laughs> and i actually made a regular post on my personal timeline earlier about mm-hmm. that and i right. like so i thought that was funny yeah we're talking um but yeah like i'm at um i'm a dad uh i got two young boys uh they'll be six and two next month oh um congrats they are a riot and they are chaos and they destroy everything Mm -hmm. and uh (laughs) and we do our best to, to keep up with them and they're full of energy and they love uh art and they love superheroes and they love dinosaurs and they love mm. just all kinds of stuff. right my uh, son loves dinosaurs talks about them all the time yeah yeah our our uh our one is almost six he said he's going to be a paleontologist mm. he's already decided he knows more dinosaurs than i do right he knows all the names <laughs> <laughs> that's funny so yeah it's fun times fun times for sure but we love them love them to death they're uh they're our world we love spending tons of time with them and taking them to the park and just doing everything we can right. with them and encouraging them in their interests and mm-hmm. seeing where they want to go. So, uh, if, if you don't mind me asking and feel free, any questions to decline to answer, I know that you're, um, you know, on film now and it's going to go out to the World Wide web and all that. Um, but what kind of things do you do is, you know, just, just in general. And then, you know, we can kind of use that as a segue to talk about like, you know, th- this the show is about lifting dad's voices. So, we'll, you know, we'll talk about whatever you want to talk about, and I'll just kind of get some questions in there to kind of get us going. Yeah. Um, so I I try to – I want to teach my kids uh, to learn from my 
experiences, mm-hmm. my success, my failures and stuff, but I also don't want to push stuff off on them. Right. Like there's a lot of stuff I'm into that they don't have to do. Like for instance, I'm a martial artist. Okay. I, I'm a third degree in Kempo. Um, I think that self-defense is important. Mm-hmm. So like I introduced it to our oldest. He didn't have to do it. I wanted him to do one lesson. I wanted right. him to try it. Sure. And yeah. see if now fortunately he did. He absolutely loves it. Mm. Uh, and he's working on his next belt and he, he, it's, it's, that's great, but I'm not going to force that on him. Right. Um, and I just try to encourage them as much as they can. So like, and like, I'm very into health, I'm a health coach. Mm-hmm. And so I try to like make sure that they stay fairly healthy as well. Uh, right. our old is a super picky eater. Mm-hmm. And so that could be a challenge sometimes. Uh, he, I think he gets that for me cause I grew up a very, very picky eater. I mm-hmm. eat everything now. Right. Uh, and then our youngest, he'll eat a piece of plastic if you let him. So he, he is he is not picky at all. Right. <laughs> they are polar opposites. And um, so and he's like a tank. Like mm-hmm. the boy is ridiculous. Um, so we try to um, I, I read I've read a lot of books and stuff mm-hmm. uh, like dad book things, um, other just personal development books. Mm-hmm. Um, and one I just read is all about focus. Okay. And I loved one of the things said in there it said kids spell love t-i-m-e mm. and good, I, good line. I, I like love it. that because i think of like when i was a kid um like i i greatly love my parents mm-hmm. like i absolutely love my parents right. great parents my dad was working 40 to 50 hours a week mm-hmm. um and neither of them are really that healthy and because of that like my dad my dad's dad died when my dad was in high school Okay. And he, he kind of like became the father figure of the family in a way. Mm -hmm. Like he had to drop out of school, take care of the work and take care of the family and stuff. And so like he overcame a lot and then he tried his best to do better with me um, because his dad wasn't the greatest. And then Mm -hmm. um, I try to do the same. Like I try to do better for my kids and encourage them and love them and spend time with them because I didn't get all that time that I got with my dad because he was working so much we didn't go like play ball we didn't play a lot together right um i don't remember him like like i said i love him to death but he was working all the time so i have more time on my hands now so since i work from home so i try to spend a lot of a lot of time with them as i can right yeah absolutely um it's it's interesting i had a you know I, i guess i had a similar experience with my dad where he worked quite a bit and, you know, the standard dad fare where, you know, he goes to work for 40 hours a week, maybe 50 hours a week, and then you basically have maybe mom at home, you know, kind of a very typical upbringing. Um, and, you know, otherwise it was pretty solid. Like I don't have, you know, I don't, I don't really have any bad memories per se. Um, but I, I, I too work from home now and I try to spend as much time as I can with my son and we go out and we'll... Um, We'll go out in the garage. He loves tools, so we will play with tools. And I've given him. I actually made a workbench for him. It's his own little workbench. It's about twenty inches tall, and it's got like a, a backing on it with um, um, uh, what's that called? Uh, the board with all the holes in it. Um, drawing a blank. Uh, I'm drawing a blank on it. Cork board? Not cork board. Um, it, it's the one where you like might hang up tools Peg. on it. Pegboard. Pegboard. Yep, yeah, pegboard. There we go. Yeah. And so he's got it's got a backing with pegboard, and then we put all these. Uh, I've given him actual real tools that he can play with that are appropriate, you know, like some wrenches and a screwdriver. And then uh, I actually gave him my old drill because he likes the drill. And then I got some adapter pieces for some like hex head screws, and so that he can you know screw them in and out. And I've, you know I've kind of got it set up so that he can actually do that kind of stuff. And he's got like a little hammer, like a real hammer. And so he'll sometimes come out and he'll just play on it. And he sand it. He's got a sandpaper, and so he'll like sand it, <laughs> you know. And uh, you know, so it's 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 a lot of fun. And I enjoy, you know, I enjoy spending that time with him. I enjoy watching him use these, you you know, use these things. And like now, I can barely pull out the drill, you know, to work on something. And he's like, "I'm gonna help. I'm gonna help." And I'm like, "All right." And so then I kind of got to try to figure out like how can he help, even if it's not, you know, if it's. I'm getting in front of the camera. Help, right? Yeah. So, uh, so, so it's very interesting. Um, you know, I, I, I kind of, if you're, if you're interested, I, I think I'd like to have more conversation on the, the whole pink shirt thing. 
Yeah. Um, and we can go a little bit further than that because since you're in the dad group, I've seen some things in there along that same line that I've kind of been a little bit annoyed by. Uh, you, I, I didn't check out, I don't remember all the comments that you received, but I can only imagine that some of them were like, oh, you gotta, you know, he's a boy, he's gotta wear blue or green or something, and you know, if he wears pink, why, he's gonna grow up to be this or that, right? And it's just like, man, he's three, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, um, <clears throat> Have you seen, and I've seen this more than once, so I'm going to turn it over to you to, to kind of give me your thoughts. Um, but I've seen more than once somebody come along and they'll post something and they'll say, my son is playing with my girlfriend's makeup. It's almost always a girlfriend, a girlfriend's makeup. He's like a three-year-old, right? And my, my two-year-old, my three-year-old is playing with my, you know, saw my, girl, my, my girlfriend with her makeup and he decided to play with it. What should I do? So I want to hear your thoughts on that question. Because I'm willing to bet that we probably are, are, are of a similar mindset here. Yeah. So, like, I mean, my son, uh, our oldest, has uh, played with, uh, like, fig- not make, uh, maybe a little bit of makeup, but, like, pay- figured out polish. It, okay. I know it was a big one. I painted my wife's, like, toenails. He, mm-hmm. like, she, he's had her his before. Right. Like, it's not a big deal. But I totally, I don't remember specifically seeing those posts, but I guarantee, based on, like, posts I've seen I'm sure there was a lot of very negative comments right ridiculous comments in there about that whole situation and people assuming that kids are gonna grow up certain ways right uh because of that I, I guarantee it because like right. my the, yeah my about the shirt that like I I know I, sometimes when I post in that group I know I'm gonna push a couple buttons right like I know <laughs> I'm gonna challenge the mindsets a little bit and I do that on purpose but I didn't realize how far it was going to go. Like right. it got really out of hand with some of the very negative, hateful right. comments that people were leaving. Yeah. So I, uh, I'm in another dad group now that someone re- referred me to that has a little bit less of that. Gotcha. <laughs> I'm still in that one. I'm in both now. Right. But uh, yeah, I, 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 I watch how I word things because I want it to be overly po- like mostly positive. I yeah. understand there's going to be some crabs in the bucket. Right. But overall positive. Yeah, it's, you know, I, one of the, when I see those posts, and I've seen like two or three of them, and I've always responded the same way. I said, rather than, because the, the, the comments are usually something along the line of like, you need to nip that in the bud. And I'm like, why? why what, are you, what are you preventing, right? And I'm like, why don't instead you just decide that you want to do something and then take your son out and do that rather than worry about like they're doing this, like let them have fun with your girlfriend, but, and then go out and and, and you, you totally ignore the makeup thing. Right. And you just are like, Hey, it's our turn to go out, our turn to have fun, go out. And I don't know, play race cars go out and you know throw stones in the in the lake whatever you know what you know like something that you feel is like the quote manly thing to do go out and do that don't make a big deal like this is what boys do just go do it and then enjoy the experience and then pay attention and if they enjoy it they'll want to do it again and then as they go as they get older they'll remember these great experiences Right. right. And and that's my perception. And that's what I want, because I can spend all this time trying to worry about. I mean, let's be honest. We'll, we'll just put it out there. What guys are worried about. They're like, oh, my son's going to turn gay. OK, well, you know what? First of all, I don't know why you're worried about who your son is eventually going to sleep with. <laughs> like, that's not my worry. I, I, I that's not my problem. Like, and, you know, and I don't mean that in a negative sense. I just mean it's not it's not for me to concern myself with, you know. Right. And so he's going to turn out how he turns out. And the thing that I want is, however my son turns out, I want him to always know, like, man, I had a great experience growing up with my dad. And I feel like you're not going to get a great experience if your dad's constantly nipping it in the bud. Right. Exactly. So, and, like, the other th- the other thing we tried to handle with it as best we could was when he got the – so, like, the whole Disney pink shirt. Like, he uh, – Princess shirt. He, we went to the Disney store. Mm-hmm. Um and before they closed and he saw it and he wanted it like we didn't mm-hmm. like direct him towards it like he went over to that section right and he saw the shirt and he wanted it 
And so we're like, okay, like we'll get it for you. Mm-hmm. But we told him like, before he, cause he wanted to wear it to school when he started school. And we're like, Hey, just like, so, you know, like, we love you. We want, we want you to ch- like, follow your interests. Right. But we prepared him that there's going to be comments. Right. That likely are going to be comments from other kids that are taught a different way mm-hmm. from their parents, their dad, whatever. Right. And so, and sure enough, that like, I mean, he went to school and all the kids were like, that's a girl shirt. Why right. are you wearing a girl shirt? Right. It's like, no, it's not a girl shirt, <laughs> but it's a pink princess shirt. That is it. Now the, the, it was a girl's cut. I know that okay. that's a thing. I know that they're like girl sure. cut sure. shirts versus I get that. But other than that, it's like, it's just a shirt. He can right. wear what he wants. So right. That, since then wearing it to school he wore it a few more times Mm -hmm. gotta stop now because he did get tired of the comments unfortunately we can't control what those other kids say and do sure we try to prepare him as best we can yeah for those things so that he's not like affected by it right yeah it's you, you know i'm i remember a i was partying in my younger days with a bunch of friends and i remember i went out and i didn't know a whole lot about different alcoholic drinks like i didn't know that there were technically drinks that people see as like guy drinks and girl drinks and whatnot and i remember i was with some buddies and they're and they're, they're good guys right like they, they i'm not trashing them you know but um i was out with them and, and I, or I i wanted a vodka drink and so i asked you know the waitress i said well, what do you got that's a vodka drink i'm not very up on the the, the the different options that are available and she was like she um she offered me a, a vodka and cranberry and I was like well you know sure why not cranberries all right you know no big deal so I got that and I literally was getting it up to my lips and my buddy was you know he made a comment um and yeah I'll just tell you the comment he was just like are you on your period and I was like excuse me <laughs> and he, he repeated it and I was like what are you talking about and he kind of was like you know we finally got through it like oh this is a woman's drink that you're drinking you need to drink a man's drink right so I I, I called the waitress over and I kind of gave her a, you know, a, a humorous hard time. I was just like, hey, what are you doing to me? And I was like, you over here, get me in trouble with my buddies. And she laughed and she's like, I'll get you a drink that's going to work out. And I was like, okay. So I drank it. So the interesting part of that story is actually happened later. I was telling a friend of mine that. And he was like, oh, yeah. He's like, yeah, there's uh, just definitely drinks that are guy drinks and then there are, there are girl drinks. And he goes, um, but here's what you can do. He said, there are some guys, they don't care. They drink whatever they want, and they don't care. And when their buddies give them a hard time, they're like, I don't care. I'll order a second one if that means that much to you, right? And I was like, man. Uh, and that had a lot of Im- impact on me. I was like, yeah. You know, like, why should I have to do what other people tell me, right? And I think, you know, so I'm bringing this back now to to your to your son's story. I'm like, I, f- I feel like this is like a good opportunity to kind of like slowly teach that same lesson. Like, yes, there are gender realities in, in society, and in many cases, maybe all of them, whatever, depends on what's going on, you can just do your own thing. And you just need to be secure enough in your own self and just be like, you know what? I hear you guys. I'm doing this anyway, period. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And we try to, yeah, try to teach him that emotional management and stuff so that mm-hmm. he handles those situations. And then all, at the same time, he's also learning how to defend himself if right. for some reason some bully decides to make it physical. Right. And a teacher nearby, somebody you can tell, like he could, worst case scenario, he could handle himself if need be. Right. That's a pitch effort. But yeah, I try to teach him like, all right, you can live how you want to live, mm-hmm. but just be prepared in these situations. But right. I, like people, people worry. They're like, oh, he's not going to have friends. I'm like, uh, he in like before he even started kindergarten, he was in a summer school, and uh, there was two groups of friends, and mm-hmm. he was the leader of his group. Like all the friends, all the like other both boys and girls were following him around. Like mm-hmm. he's he's so outgoing and everything. I was like, the, he can make friends with a tree, right? And so, like I, I was like, there's that's never going to be an issue for him. And he's, right. he's learning how to do himself. Like he's we're teaching him the emotional side, trying to so right. Like he'll be, but. Society thinks like, oh, he's not going to fit in or he's not going to make friends or, or whatever. It's not normal. Right. And I'm like, well, normal is unhappy, unhealthy and broke. So I don't want him to be normal. I right. take that as a compliment. Right. Not normal. Right. Normal is uh, there's a quote that I heard recently. It says hurt people hurt people. Right. And it's so true. When you have someone that's negative like that, chances are they're that it 
a lot of times it just boils down to they're missing love in their life. Right. Whether it's from their parents, whether it's from their spouse, their friends, their family, somebody did right. not love them properly. And yep. now they're jacked up and now they're only either whether it's on purpose or subconsciously, mm-hmm. they end up hurting other people to make themselves feel better. Right. Yeah. And I, you know, I think it, um, I think another aspect is that, that people need to realize they're kids. Like they're just gonna like they go through phases. Like it's weird to me that people will, on one hand, say, "Oh, these are kids are just going through a phase," but then they make a big issue about the phase. And I'm like, "Well, which is it? Are they going through a phase, and you don't have to worry too much about it, or is it, you know, is is this the thing that you gotta, die, you know, this is the hill that you need to die on, right?" And I look at it, and I, I generally think like, if they're three or four or five you know, probably all the way up until they get into their teens, most of the things that you worry about, like as far as their choices are concerned, are probably not a big deal. I mean, there are a few that maybe are, you you know, probably shouldn't let them eat candy all day. And if they say, hey, I want to eat ice cream and candy for breakfast and lunch and dinner. Yes, I think those are times when you definitely need to kind of, you know, put your foot down and be like, no, you know, we're totally not doing that. Um, but I, you know, outside of those kind of things, it just seems absurd that people spend so much time spending, uh, you know, spending whatever time that they have creating negative memories as opposed to creating positive ones, right. you know, and I, and I just, I feel like that's kind of a weird thing, um, that, that we do it. So it's, it's just really, it's just really weird. Yeah. So I agree, but people want their kids to grow up too fast. Right. And even that whole concept is kind of odd when you think about it, because adults, if anything, need to uh, just act like kids again. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. I think like our kids, like our kids are so outgoing and stuff. They'll wave to people mm-hmm. like they'll say hi to right. the, them. Like our our kids can make it doesn't matter what mood someone is in. They can make almost anyone smile in the grocery store. Right. Like it, whether saying hi or laughing or like waving or whatever, they make anyone smile. And like for them to do that is normal. People right. expect if I were to do the same things that my kids do in the store, people would look at me like I'm a crazy person. Right. Yeah, it's that's really like, interesting. Yeah. People tell them like, oh, you should like you should act this way. Like, well, you, I mean, good posture is good. But like, you know what I mean? Like, stand up straight. Like, don't don't talk to that person. Don't wait. Don't do that. Why? Right. Like, if we all treated each other that way with, with like love and like compassion and things like that, then the world would be a much better place. But what we tell everyone, like be afraid of everyone else. Right. Which, that's a whole another conversation of what's going on in the world right now. But like, we don't want to um, stifle them so much that they're like afraid to talk to anybody. Like, I mean, right. I know like you don't want to, I know the whole like stranger danger yeah. and stuff like that. Obviously you want that. Obviously you want them safe. But it, it becomes, a, it, at a certain point, it becomes a detriment. Like, right. it, like I, so often I'll be in a store and if I just like make eye contact with someone, didn't say anything, just make eye contact. They like look down and look away. Right. And it's like, when did we, at what point in our growth, in our growth, did we decide like, oh, you know what? Everyone is the enemy. Right. Yeah. It's, it's, it's kind of weird that we look at kids and we don't envy them and we don't say, you know, like what what they have is something that, you know, we, we don't look at it and say, well, I would like to be able to make friends quickly. I mean, I took my son to the gym tonight, right? And he was out playing. Now, he's a little skittish with some other kids, and that's fine. I mean, he just, you know, I, I think he's just uh, cautious. He, you know, he's, he's a little bit more cautious than his daddy ever was, at least from the stories that I was told. Um, but that's fine. But he goes out, and he seems to have fun. And, like, you know, sometimes he'll sit down with a kid and just chat it up. And, you know, and they're not... Like he's, he's, he's only learning to talk now. Um, so, you know, he doesn't have like these long full sentences and all that. So, you, you know, you're, you're like, my wife was listening to him talk to another kid the other day and she was just amazed because there wasn't really a decipherable conversation being had. I mean, maybe a few words here and there, uh, but they seem to have understood each other and they seem to just connect and gel and it, they, it, nothing else really mattered. And like you were saying, we get older and we put all these barriers in front of us such that it's it's more difficult, right? We, we're looking for all these things like, you know, it's like a checkbox, like, you know, and, but the checkbox or not the check, but the, the checklist. 
but the checklist seems to get longer and longer and longer, you know, and, and, you know, it, it, it's almost like we're looking for ways to not be social when maybe we need to take a cue from kids and say, well, how do we be more social? Right. And but at the same time, be diligent. I mean, you know, we don't obviously want him running off with some guy that just offered him candy to a van. I mean, that would be, you know, terrible. Um, but that doesn't mean that we need to, uh, you, I think you're right. We stifle too much. Right. Yeah. So so w going back to this martial art thing, um, you said he only took one lesson or, or did you say he took one and then he enjoyed it? Is that what it was? Yeah. Yeah. I wanted them to at least try it. Okay. I wanted them to like at the very least uh, to try one or two lessons. Okay. And, and how did that turn out? Really well. Like he absolutely loved it. Absolutely mm -hmm. love it. There's been a couple times where, like, if we ended up for some reason having a lesson later in the day and he was like tired, mm -hmm. he'd get a little fussy or something. But other than that, he's loved it. He's been training for about three or four months now. Okay. Uh, once a week, and he got his orange belt, and I was working on his purple belt. Um, and like, I mean, he's young, so like, there's some play in there. It's not like strict thirty minutes nonstop or anything. Like there's a little bit of breaks in there and we'll play mm -hmm. around and stuff. But overall, like he's doing well, he's loving it. Um, but it like, like I, I, like I said, I've been doing it for years. Um, I love Kempo. Kempo is more like true self-defense. Mm -hmm. Like, what are you going to do? If someone jumps you in the street. There are no rules. Right. There's not really, there's not really like true competitions or anything like that because like we don't use mitts or anything. We use control. Right. Uh, we don't use headgear or anything like that it's more like someone tries to do something what are you going to do about it gotcha uh and so uh i believe every kid should take some sort of martial arts right yeah i what, so what age do you recommend they start if they're about you know, five or so oh five okay um, from what i've seen just because like you have to have some of the motor function and stuff down gotcha um i know i i don't know how they work in all the martial arts I know for Kempo, for what we do, um, like you can't get a black belt until you're 16. Okay. Um, so like, even if you've learned a lot of stuff before then, just because the motor function, the, like the, the effort it takes to get it done. Like when he got his orange belt, there's 30 techniques on orange belt. He did not have to do all 30. Okay. He did like five or 10 because he's young, but once he gets older, he'll have to go back through the system and go back through and get those. But it like with kids, you have to promote them fairly early or they'll lose interest. Okay. So it's, it's finding that balance. But as gotcha. he gets older and he wants to continue it, then he, he'll go back through and learn it all, like every single part of it. Um, okay. Afterwards. So, but I like not only for the self-defense portion, but the, the confidence, the discipline it takes, all of that I think is huge characteristics that are really great to build into our kids mm -hmm. so that they can not only defend themselves, but they learn how to like, like work ethic and stuff like that. Right. So did you, have you noticed a difference yet or is it still a bit early? Um, he hits me more often. Um, <laughs> I have to watch out a little bit, right. but, uh, other, other than that, not, it's, it's hard to say not okay. a whole lot. I, w I would say, but I mean, it's only been a few months. Right. But. Gotcha. Okay, cool. Yeah. I know we've, my wife and I have talked about it and, we've talked about it because um i was bullied as a kid and i was bullied pretty much up until around the sixth or seventh grade and that's when i was introduced to humor and i don't want to i mean i wasn't really introduced to humor i just started you know i basically started making jokes back at them but at myself and yeah. and, and we you know for for anybody that's listening we used um, older terms so they would call it cracking on yourself you know, like, oh, I'm cracking on him or whatever. I don't know what the young kids are using today. Um, but they were like, oh, my God, he's he's cracking on himself. And they're like, they didn't know what to do. They were just like, uh, okay. And I started realizing that humor was a great way. It was, it was it's, it kind of was its own defense mechanism. Um, however, I ended up taking it too far and getting to the point where I would make, like, jokes that were just way out of line, right? And I learned that one of the quickest ways to get people to be quiet is to uh, take a joke or take a comment way further than they were willing to go. 
and so I would, you know, I kind of learned the art, I guess, of just making the worst and most inappropriate joke whatsoever. And then in my adult years, I had to learn to kind of dial it back a little bit. Um, and I did take martial arts as well. Um, I don't know that I got any confidence necessarily out of it. Um, not personally, but I think also at the same time, I took it a little bit later after I had kind of already found a coping mechanism for being bullied and picked on. But I do remember being bullied and picked on, and I and I do not want my son to feel um, the, the the powerlessness of it. I don't know. If, um, had, did you do you ever experience any bullying when you were younger? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Mo um, some of mine, not much of mine was physical. A lot mm -hmm. of it was more like verbal, okay, and stuff. Um, but it was mostly by girls. Um, when I was picked on, like I was. I grew up very, very scrawny. Okay. Um, like I was by far the like I looked like I was anorexic, but I ate gotcha. all the time. Right. It was junk food mostly. Like mm -hmm. it was like all the little Debbie snack cakes and stuff like that. Like I, I my nutrition was terrible. Mm -hmm. uh, but I had a high metabolism as a kid, so like I couldn't put on weight. Um, I was I grew tall quickly, uh, so I was tall, skinny. I hunched over. Um, I was. I had friends, but like not super like, well, some close friends, but I, uh, but yeah, I got picked on a lot, gotcha. um, mostly by girls. And so, which in the end, so like this kind of ties in just all mindset and stuff. I'm very grateful for that. Mm -hmm. it's, it's kind of a, in a backwards way because, because of that, me getting picked on and stuff as a kid, it caused me in high school to get into junior ROTC. Okay. And then through that, I started working out and then I went to college and started and I was working out in college and then it, I worked out pretty much consistently since I was like 16. Okay. And then I got into like, and that's, it's actually the reason I got into martial arts too, because I wanted like the confidence and stuff like that, knowing mm -hmm. I can defend myself. Um, and so because of getting, I mean, I don't reckon, I don't want any kid to obviously get picked on. I don't want my right. son to get picked on. Right. But in my personal scenario, because you can go two different ways, a kid can use that um, or let that hold them back forever. Right. Like they can use, like have that like, keep holding back the rest of their lives, or they could flip it around. And for me, right. I flipped it around. So I took that as a catalyst to where now, like, I've done all kinds of things. Like I've ran a half marathon. I've deadlifted 500 pounds. I'm a third degree black belt. Like I, right. I have typically I've grown, um, in my health and right. stuff because of those situations. I've worked on personal development and self love and things like that so that I can overcome those situations from my past. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, so basically what I'm hearing is, uh, don't mess with you. Like, you know, be nice to this guy. <laughs> so anybody, if you're watching and you see this gentleman, you know, uh, you should probably act like a child and just be like, hey, how's it going? Hey, you know. Um, I've, I've never had to use it. I, I get okay. along with like everybody. So right. I, well, you know, it's like they, it's like, you know, I, I, don't, I don't know where you stand, but um, as a libertarian, I am a uh, very avid gun um, uh, 2A uh, supporter. And I, we always, we have this saying, like, it's better to have and not need than to need and not have. And I think martial arts is the same, at least as far as the skill of it. You know, um, right. it's, it's better to have that skill and be prepared to use it and then hopefully never have to. So, yeah, um, yeah but, you know, that was that, that, that's kind of interesting because you were talking about like growing up scrawny and I grew up scrawny and I had a poor diet. I ate like really crappy foods, you know, snack foods growing up. Um, I'm five foot three, so I, I never actually grew tall. I just stayed scrawny. Um, you know, so if you see me on the street, I mean, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> uh, I'm harder to bully though, these, these days. So it's, it's not, it's not as easy as it was when I was in sixth grade. So, so some right. things have changed. Uh, so, you know, I guess bully if you dare, uh, world, <laughs> but, um, so, so what other kind of things do you do with your, your children outside of just martial arts and, you know, in, in, you know, like, cause you're a stay at home dad, um, what kind of things do you, do you guys get into? Oh, I lost the audio. Hello? Uh, let's see here. I'm not hearing the audio. Oh, oh there, there we you go. go. Yeah, I don't know what happened. All right, no worries. Uh, anyway, 
Um, so another thing they're really big into is art. Mm -hmm. Um, they love like arts and crafts and stuff. So we color with them, we paint with them. Right. Um, they have a little, like boogie board thing where they draw on it and you just hit a button and it erases it. So they'll draw on there all the time. Mm -hmm. Um, and then they, that's a, that's a lot of their time is art. They, they, because my wife's a graphic designer Oh. and they've kind of like seen what she's done and they've kind of followed suit right. there too. Um, and then we'll go to the park. Um, we, uh, watch like just, I watch way too much Sesame street. Um, like it's ridiculous. I've never watched so much Sesame street. I watch more Sesame street now than I did as a kid. Right. I like guess it's, it's insane. That's um, <laughs> and bluey, but there are worse shows. Right. So I'm not stuck with Coco melon. So I'm, I'm oh, cool with yeah. that. Yeah. We got, my son loves Coco melon. He's he, he and I, I, I tolerate it because they're, um, one, the one thing I do like about Coco melon is that it has words at the bottom of the screen and they light up as they're singing. So I'm like, all right, well, if he's watching it, then he's at least watching the subtitles and hopefully that's contributing to his future reading skills. Um, and the songs aren't bad. I mean, they're not, I mean, I just, they're not exciting cause I'm 43. <laughs> so, um, and it was funny you mentioned, uh, I, so my wife is Indonesian <clears throat> and, uh, so there's actually something called Jalan Sesama, which is basically Sesame street for Indonesia. And I don't know that they're producing any more episodes, but they have a series, uh, like the, the, uh, first season or one season on YouTube. And so I've been downloading those and putting them on like a USB stick so that he can watch them. And he's, start, he's starting to really get into them and, and watch them now. So, um, I'm watching a lot of Indonesian Sesame Street, which looks very, I mean, it's, it's well produced. It's, it's produced very well. Um, but I, I don't understand anything that they're saying. And he seems to, I don't know if he just doesn't care or if he actually understands it to some degree. I don't, I haven't really worked that out yet. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's fun. Uh, and anything in this house is, yeah, I don't want to say anything. Um, my biggest peeve would be Blippy. I, I just think that seems like a dumb show. And so I'm just like, I'm very anti Blippy. Yeah, I, I fully agree. I fully agree. And then there was this other one where I kind of, I think I blocked it out of my head, but this woman, it was a mom. And then like, every time she called her son, something, she said the same thing. It was like a weird na nickname or something she gave him. Hmm. And she would say it like every five seconds. Hmm. And it drove me up a wall. Like I was like, uh, nope, no, nope. that one I could not put up with. I was like, nope, we got to turn that off. I right. can't life of me remember what it was. Um, but it was, it was not fun. <laughs> I could imagine. Yeah. I, I'm trying to think. I was like, man, have I seen that? Cause he'll, he'll, he'll grab, uh, when we get onto, we turn on Netflix and he'll want we'll go up to the screen and he'll, he'll point at which one he wants. And it's always something different. And he acts like it's, you know, the thing that he's been just waiting to see for like, 30 minutes he'll just be like oh yeah yeah, yeah. because he'll he, he, he's like this he he goes up to the screen and he's like really looking and then he you know he's and i'm moving i'm scrolling it slowly and it's like he's looking for something very specific and then he's like that one that one right there yeah. and then i'm like but i'm I, but i know that he hasn't like memorized all these shows because like i watch a lot of these shows with him so i'm like yeah. I, I know you haven't seen plus netflix to let you know like you can see what like, you know do you want to continue watching? And some of these things are brand new. And I'm like, okay, I don't know. I don't know what's going on here, but this is, this is so weird. But yeah. uh, we, we, we do try to limit the amount of television that he watch. I actually want him to go out and do things, experience things, because I think that um, it contributes to his self-esteem and his willingness to try new stuff. Because I, you know, I think that if he goes out and he, climbs a tree, digs a hole, throws a rock, um, you know, goes out and plays with the water, uh, you know, rides his bicycle, like all these different things. These are all experiences that he's having and that it allows him to um, kind of experience the, I, the, the experience, how do I want to say it? Experience new experiences, right? Like that yeah. in itself is meta experience, is, it, is an experience in itself. And he seems to really be enjoying novelty. Can you hear him in the background? 
You, you might a little bit, yeah. Yeah, my, my wife's got him upstairs, and I'm, my office is upstairs, and it's right next to his room. So um, they're getting ready to get him a shower and get him put, uh, get him settled into bed. So um, so there's that. So I want to ask you something, because I don't really get to talk to a whole lot of dads that much, especially dads that have younger kids. Do you have any kind of paranoia, like, day to day or do you remember any any instances where you're just kind of paranoid about things and you went like this extra mile just to resolve your own paranoia even though you knew like deep down you knew like there's no reason for me to be anxious about this but i am and i'm going to deal with it in a way that's going to make me feel better <laughs> do you have do you have any of those kind of experiences because i feel like i have like one every week you mean like where you worry like something's going to happen to your kids or something yeah yeah, so I'll give you a great example, and this maybe will help you kind of kind of trigger you to think of something. I like, the other night I came to bed, and my son was in our bed, and he was he likes to sleep like this. So he'll lay down, and he'll like spread out, and he's got like his legs, like his feet together, but his knees kind of you know kind of crossed out. So yeah. he's like taking up a lot of space, and because of that, he doesn't necessarily like sleeping in between us because it doesn't give him enough space, you know, um, and so. He uh, he'll go to the edge. Of the, he'll he'll go to the end, uh, the foot of the bed, and sleep toward that end. And so I come in. He's sleeping toward the foot of the bed, and I get into bed. And there's plenty of room for me, so I'm laying there. And I actually happened to uh, I was actually up late, so I was up to like 3 a.m. like really 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 late. So I come in and I lay down, and for whatever reason, it just started bothering me that he was at the foot of the bed. And I was just all all I could think of was like, man, what if he falls off the bed? But I didn't leave it at what if he falls off the bed? In my mind, I started like, creating these really crazy scenarios. And I was like, well, what if he falls off the bed and like hurts his neck and he can never walk or move his arms? And so then this thought just kept like bugging me. And, and, he, and he was laying there sleeping, just quiet, no big deal. And finally, I was just to settle, to settle my own mind. I reached down and I grabbed him, I brought him up. And then I, I decided, well, I'll just take up less space, which will be... <laughs> more tolerable than this <laughs> mental uh, you know paranoia do, do you ha do you ever have any moments like that please tell me you did so i don't always act on them okay but yes like i've had many scenarios in my head where like where you're like what if something happens like because i i don't know i i don't know if it, it's just because like i don't know why it causes the paranoia the right. only thing i could think of is too many uh too many superhero uh movies and I picture like Batman losing his family or right. or whatever. I think of those those scenarios. But yeah, that I mean that stuff pops in my head all the time. Like the other day, our youngest climbed out of the pack and play. Mm -hmm. I heard a, I was downstairs. I heard a thud, and I come upstairs and he's running around in his room. And yeah, the first thing I thought was like, what if he fell on his head? Right. Like, yeah, I think of those things. Gotcha. All the time. And and it's weird because I, it's not like I'm. You know, I don't feel like I'm a helicopter parent because I'm all like, oh, yeah, you should go out and do so. You know, climb up that. Yeah, try it out. You know, I, I, so I, I, yeah. I encourage him. There are just yeah. times, you know, where I'm just like, you know, for whatever reason, anxiety has got a hold of me, you know. Yeah. But other times, I, I, you know, like I went out to the garage one day. This is maybe about a year ago. Went out to the garage and he. Um, he was running around inside, and we have tile floor um, in Florida. I don't know what state are you in? Missouri. Missouri. Okay. So I don't. I, I don't. Yeah. When I lived up north, I, it wasn't very common to have like tile floor everywhere. But in Florida, it's very, very common. We have tile floor like throughout, you know, most of the house, and at least the downstairs. Um, and um, so he's running around, and Grandma's doing some dishes, and then all of a sudden, I just hear, bah! and I was like, all right, let me go in and see what's going on. So I go and go back into the kitchen. And uh, he's laying on the floor, and there's like literally a puddle of blood, uh, probably about the size of my palm, my hand. I'm getting my hand on the screen there. And uh, so, and I don't freak out. Like I just, I go down and I pick him up, and I turn him over, and I see he's bleeding from, from his nose. And I look and I see that he's got socks on. So I assume that he's probably running around um, and just slipped and fell and busted his face. And, and I, I think at this time he hadn't quite learned the art of like you know putting his hands out and breaking his fall in any way. So I think right. he just, I, I think he basically just fell and there wasn't a whole lot of effort, you know, cause he busted his nose. And so I, I took care of him and I, I said, well, I said, son, luckily your dad, you know, talked trash to some the kid, you know, too many kids when he was a kid. So he knows what to do with the, you know, with the bloody nose. <laughs> so, uh, but it's just funny. Cause I, I feel like sometimes I may be a little bit, you know, over paranoid and I, I, I always look 
you know, hoping that other dads are like, yeah, dude, I totally think about this crazy stuff all the time. But I guess maybe I, I should stop acting on it. <laughs> so. it, it yeah, it, it can it can be tough sometimes. There's times I'll make a phone call or whatever. If they're out and I'm right. worried or something. But. Gotcha. So, uh, so, but did you, do you have these thoughts more or did you have these thoughts more when they were younger and it kind of grew out of it? Like when they get a little bit older or just has it been pretty constant? Well, um, I would say more when, mainly when our youngest was, cause our, our youngest was six weeks preemie. Okay. So he was in the NICU. So right. when he was little, like really little, yeah, that, that happened a lot more Right now. I mean, they run into walls and stuff right. all the time you right know, and just right. bounce off the other way they they hit they hit stuff or fall or something in, in a way that i'm looking at them like that would hurt me and then right. they just get up and run off yeah so i'm yeah. like they're yeah. just like rubber <laughs> yeah i i don't make a big issue of it when it happens it's 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 yeah. always for me when there's no good reason to believe something's gonna happen right like yeah. there was really no good reason for me to believe that he was literally gonna scoot and fall off the bed and you know break his little baby neck um, and, but for whatever reason, my mind just latched onto it and wouldn't let go. And, and yeah. I wasn't able to sleep. And I laid there for about an hour before I finally was like, all right, we're going to deal with this and we'll just bring him up here. So, um, but anyway, so, so what else, uh, what, what are the cool things should we know about? I know we're getting close to our time here. We're about 45 minutes in. What are the cool things do, do we need to know about Jay and, and, and being a dad? Um, I would say, I mean, the main thing is just I try to spend as much time with them as I can mm-hmm. and love them, but also like love them, but it's also the tough love. Sure. Like they need to learn how to like that. Sometimes, yeah, you get hurt, or right. sometimes things don't go your way. Sometimes right. you do as well as you thought you would. Um, and to remind them, like I want our family motto to be: we can do hard things. Mm, nice. Like, sometimes stuff is tough. Because our oldest, like he's gotten this bad habit to where if something's hard, he quits, mm. and we don't want that. It's right. like, it's like it's oh, if it, if you're moving to something better or something like, it's okay to quit something intentionally because you just just legit don't want to do it anymore, right? Or like you found something better, but it's not like just because it's hard. Gotcha. Like if we can tell, we tell he, we if we can tell he really wants to do something, mm-hmm. and then it's hard and he quits. We, try to get him to, to finish it because like, we know that he really does want to do it. He mm-hmm. just, it's just tough. We try to teach him like we can do hard things. Right. Because too often people just quit. They just give right. up and they're taught that that's okay. That right. you can just give up every time you want on whatever you want. And then people stop chasing their dreams. Right. And that's what we don't want. Like so, that's, that's part of what I do as a health coach. Like I help people dream again okay. because people don't realize well, not just in their health, but in their physical health and their mental health and their financial health and whatever. Like, like I, I, it, it drives me nuts when somebody has a birthday and I wish them happy birthday. And I'm like, what, how are you celebrating? And they're like, I'm just working. Why? And I go, oh, I'm getting older. It doesn't matter. I'm like, it still matters. You should celebrate your birthday at 45, just as you did at five. Right. You still there? Like, oh, okay, you, you, the screen froze, but we're good. Yeah. But yeah, like it's stuff like that. Like I want them to realize, like, just because you get older doesn't mean you can't have fun. Right. You can continue to have fun. So and we try to have fun ourselves too. Yeah. So when you know there are times when your child isn't able to complete a task, right? Like you know they're they're trying to do something and um, maybe they're just not ready yet or they haven't quite figured it out. So how do you, at such a young age, how do you handle the the reality of, you know, you need to keep trying until you get it? Uh, because that's that's kind of what I see my son, like he'll try to do something. And he, sometimes it's not something he's supposed to be doing. He's trying to make something like he's trying to put a square in a, pe- a round hole, right? Square peg in a round hole. And he doesn't realize that it's just not going to work. And then there are other times when he's trying to do something and he just gets too frustrated too quickly, and then he gets mad and he throws something, starts crying, and you know gets really upset. So, so and I, you know, what do you, what kind of things have you done to help them realize that hey, it's okay to you know maybe fail this time and then try it again? Yeah, um, the biggest one is lead by example. 
Um, it's kind of like, like, I mean, most people have heard, like, if you get in a fight with your spouse, um, and like people think like, oh, if you get in a fight with your spouse in front of your kids, like leave the room or whatever, or like, don't like, you know what I mean? Like try to hide it or whatever. It's like, I mean, my wife and I never fight like ever really. Mm-hmm. Like we have like my disagreements or something like that. But it, even in those situations, like finish it in front of your kids right. because it shows them how to finish it. Just like if, if something is hard, I finish it and I explain to my kids like that it was hard for me too. And I got it done. Right. We lead by example. We show them like, like if we could do it, cause they look up to us. Right. So if we show them that well, it was hard for me too, but I finished it, then it gives them the confidence. Like, well, if daddy can do it, then maybe I can do it. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. That's just, good. Just like in health, if I'm telling someone how great broccoli is and I'm sitting there eating a donut, Mm-hmm. they're not going to believe a word I say. <laughs> right. So but, same concept there with, because uh, I know you were, you were talking about like you didn't eat very well when you were growing up, and I'm, I'm sure that you're trying to impart good health on your children. Is 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 that kind of the same approach you take? Yeah. So, I mean, they it's not like they eat perfect. I mean, right. they right. are kids. They're going to be surrounded by other kids that are right. eating junk food and stuff like that. So they occasionally have like a candy bar or whatever. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But overall, they eat vastly for the, for the most part, they do eat majority of what we eat. Right. They fa- fairly healthy, way better than I did. Um, right. They never, they never have soda. Mm-hmm. Like, um, and they don't like the carbonation, and I try to keep it that way. Mm. Um, <laughs> it's an easy, it's a very easy way to avoid it. Right. Uh, but like, there's certain things that we don't really allow. Like, they still have cake on their birthday, stuff right. like that. Right. But overall, like, we teach them like this is healthy, this is not healthy. Right. This is going to make you strong. This Mm -hmm. is not because like we try to tie, we don't want an unhealthy relationship with food. Right. We don't want food to be friend. We want it to be fuel. So we try to teach them like, like we know that our oldest is really into superheroes. Mm -hmm. So an an easy way to combat it is say like, all right, this is going to make you big and strong, like such and such character. Right. So he's like, Ooh, I want to be like that character. So I'm going to eat the healthier food. Right. So kind of te- teaching him that way. Gotcha. So, and he is a big eater. So sometimes it's a struggle, but overall he's doing better. But right. it's a, it, you have to continually work on it. If you just give in all the time, then it's not going to really teach him anywhere. That's where that right. tough love play. Like you have to, you have to be willing to tell them no. Right. Like on a regular basis. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I think that I think the challenge that we have that's a little unique, and in, 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 I don't know that a lot of people have it. Grandma lives with us and grandma is grandma, right? So, yeah. I mean, I remember growing up, my grandma, I would get in trouble, like legitimate trouble. And my grandma would be like, well, why are you, uh, why are you punishing him? Why are you getting mad at him? And, you know, I, I deserved it. And then she would be like, he just needs ice cream, <laughs> you know? And so his yeah. grandma is, you know, kind of a similar way. Like if he wants a snack from her and she likes her snacks and, She'll give him a snack, you know. She's like, "Well, he wanted it, so I gave it to him." And I'm, you know, and I and I don't get mad at her, and and I, and I try to never ever get mad at Grandma because I'm like, he is experiencing what I think every little child should experience from their grandma, you know, and and what grandmas and grandpas should enjoy doing, right? Which is basically giving them everything that they want, you know. Right. Um, so it's a challenge because sometimes we'll get to dinner. And I can tell that he's been snacking with grandma because he's not hungry. And, you know, but even even still, he, he eats far better than, you know, at least than I remember eating. I don't remember what I ate when I was three. But when I, you know, when I got into my older teens, uh, I ate terrible. I was eating, you know, McDonald's yeah. and stuff like that and, you know, snacks oh, yeah. and chips and, you know, basically garbage. And, yeah. um, you know, so he, he doesn't really get a lot of that. He gets some of it, but I've noticed he doesn't really like candy that much. Like he 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 actually prefers to open. Like when we went trick or treating, he actually enjoyed opening the candy and then just put it, pouring it out and playing with it, but not actually eating it. So <laughs> I, I felt like that was a win. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you got you got to take the win. Like you're not gonna, it's not gonna be a win every single time. Right. But we have to continually work on it. Yeah. And that's the key. and understand that like a lot of the things that we're teaching them that healthier or things like that if it's still anything that we're teaching them that's going against society standards is going to be an uphill battle just both for us and for our kids right 
but we have to stay strong through that and then teach them that too. Like, like with health, like teaching them, like you're going to be around other kids. Mm -hmm. They're going to eat all the time. Right. Teaching them, like, don't judge those people. Don't call them out on it because they're not going to like that either. Right. But just make sure that you're making your choice based on your health, not on theirs. Right. Just like, and like with, the, I mean, now with the grandma living with you, that does make it more challenging. Right. <laughs> but if we're like out, like with family or something like that, like we tell them like, and they're like, oh, I try, I made this homemade. You got to try it. It's like, no. I appreciate the love that you put in it. And that's what means the most, not the food itself. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I, I, I love that you took the time to make me this. Right. But that doesn't mean I have to eat it. Right. Yeah. A lot of and, times we do the courtesy bite. Like, we'll, yeah. Have, yeah, we'll just have like a, you know, and, and, you know, and that's very common. And that's very common in my wife's culture is to, to have that courtesy bite. Um, but, um, you know, it's just, uh, I, I think one of the things that we try to do is to not, and I don't know how you feel about this, but we try not to contradict each other as adults. So if grandma gives him something, I, you know, the only time I'll intervene, like I did the other day, she let him have like a, a dinner roll from the package, but he had two. And I was like, no, 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 no. I was like, you get one. And then, you know, he got mad and, and he threw the one that I left him on the floor. And then I was like, all right, well, go to your room and then you come back out when you're ready. And then when he came back out, he had his dinner roll, the one, right? But but I but I, otherwise, I'm you know like my wife will sometimes look and say, hey, you know, did you give this to him? Or I'll say, did you give this to him? And we had to quickly be careful because he started getting into the juices, and he would get one from me, and then he would get one from my wife, and then maybe even one from grandma. And so then we had to start like talking and saying, all right, yeah, did you yeah. give him one? Because <laughs> yeah. we learned quickly how fast they learn to manipulate us. That it's it's scary. <laughs> yeah, it's scary how fast they learn that. Yeah, we've totally caught that. Yeah, we try to like be on the same page, and if we're not, like when the kids aren't around, we'll go and talk about it. Like, all right, what, mm -hmm. like we, let's find some middle ground here. Yep. Bottomless, so that we can better handle it in the future. Right. Yeah. Even so if I don't like, we don't like that. We don't. Go ahead. Go yeah, ahead. That's right. We don't. We don't want to be the good cop, bad cop. Like, right. we are in a sense. Like, I am tougher on mm -hmm. them life is but we don't want it to be so far that every time they come they never come to me they only go to her right if they want something you know dad's gonna say no like we don't really want it. so we try to find that middle ground as best we can mm -hmm. so that they understand like that both of us are on the same page right yeah we um you know like even when my wife does something that i don't particularly care for i try just to have that conversation at a later point because i don't want yeah. i don't want him to learn like that I, I mean i'm sure he'll eventually learn like hey dad prefers this mom prefers this i mean that's eventually gonna gonna happen but i want him to see a united front right for as long as possible and i mean eventually he'll 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 know and i mean you, you won't be able to hide it forever but at least in his more early formative years i want him to see a united front like hey mom and dad are on the same page and if mom says no then daddy's gonna say no you know, and, you know, that, that, that's the nipping in the bud that I think is is worthwhile. Right. Like nip in the bud, trying to manipulate mom and dad against each other, you know. Yeah. Um, so. All right. Well, uh, anything else you got? I think that's that's most of it. All I mean, right. Just, well, it's yeah. been a great discussion, Jay. I'm, I'm actually glad to have met you. I think it was uh, you know, I, I think it's nice to know that there are other dads out there who you know, aren't bent out of shape about, you know, if your child wants to play with some makeup or if your child wants to, you know, wear pink. Like my son, we went to the store to buy shoes and, uh, you know, for like uh, the Black Friday or whatever. And he yeah. picked out a pair of pink shoes. And, I, you know, somebody asked me the other day, they were like, what's his favorite color? And I was like, I don't think he has one. But now that I think about it, you know, I've, I've thought about it since then. And I'm like, you know, he picked out the pink shoes. He seems to like just tonight. He picked out a pink toy. I'm like, I think he might just like the word the color pink right now. So I'm like, all right, well, maybe his favorite color right now is pink. I don't know. You know, I'm like, but I don't care. Like, it doesn't matter to me. You know, like if he wants to. If he, I mean, and the shoes. I mean, they're not like they're not quite girly shoes. They, they, you know, they just happen to be a little bit more pink than most people would expect. But I think they're, I think they're just fine. I'm like, you know, whatever. And. uh and you know when he gets older, we'll you know if he if he likes unorthodox things like like what you were saying, 
uh, we'll just teach them like, hey, you got to stand tall, buddy. Um, some people aren't going to like your decisions, and that's that. So, um, you know, but uh, you, you, it, was, it was great having you on. I think, it, uh, you know, I've learned some, some interesting stuff, I think, uh, that, that's definitely going to be swirling around my head. I hope people that are listening, I hope they enjoy, enjoyed it and got something out of it. And um, I hope you enjoyed being on as well. Yeah, absolutely. I did. Thank, thank you for having me on. That's all for this episode. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to hit that subscribe button and connect with me at Liberty Dad on Facebook, Liberty Dad Pod on Twitter, or send me an email to LibertyDadPodcast at gmail.com. I'd love to hear from you. To catch Liberty Dad episodes when they air, head over to Facebook.com forward slash free speech media, where the weekly episode airs Monday night at 8 p.m. And while you're there, be sure to check out the other free speech media shows. Prefer an audio format? Then head on over to LibertyDad.com or just search for Liberty Dad, all one word, on your favorite podcast app. Remember, if you're a champion of liberty, your business is people and your product is liberty. Have a great week. Catch you next time. And I'm out.